what's up guys thanks for joining the channel and in this one i'm going to compare the iphone 13 mini with the samsung galaxy a32 5g the iphone 13 mini is the is a flagship smallest cheapest iphone that you could get in the 13 series and the galaxy a32 5g is the cheapest 5g phone from samsung i think this is a good matchup but let's go ahead and take a deeper look and i'd appreciate it if you subscribe i'm trying to reach those thousand subscribers it keeps me motivated i love making these videos it's my hobby i hope you do too and join me let's go ahead and take a deeper look at these two phones all right so price wise the iphone 13 mini um, it's going to be $700, 730 if you're getting it unlocked. It is the cheapest 5G phone from Apple in the 13 series. Um, the next cheaper phone would be the iPhone 12 mini, but this is the new and improved version of that. And the Galaxy A32 5G is a value-driven device. It's super, super value-driven um, and is the cheapest uh, Samsung Galaxy phone that you can get. Um, you can get it for around $200 unlocked and you can get it for free on many prepaid carriers here in the US. So price wise, there's a big difference between these, but these are a good matchup. Um, we got 5G, we got Samsung, we got Apple, we got iPhone. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look. Now, the similarities are beginning with 5G. Both of these are gonna be 5G speeds and that means that you're gonna get great great download times, speedy downloads of music, of movies, of games, of apps. Um, there's going to be almost no buffering. If you're in a great signal with 5G, it just makes the experience so much better. There's no excuse for not getting a 5G phone now. So both of these phones have it covered, except one's just way more expensive. Overall size, yes, the iPhone 13 mini is going to be small. It's five inches tall, two and a half inches thick, 0.3 inches thick. Uh, thin now a32 5g six and a half inches tall three inches wide 0.36 inches uh, thick so the overall bigger device a32 5g but the iphone 13 mini is going to be very small that's why it's called a mini and a lot of people are still in the market for a small 5g phone so this is perfect for them uh, weight wise it is unbelievably uh you know lightweight the iphone 13 mini is less than five ounces a32 5g kind of hefty 7.2 ounces build quality 13 mini keeps it nice glass front glass back aluminum frame you're getting great build quality for all that money a32 5g glass front plastic frame plastic back um it's given that at this price point yes it's gonna be a plastic build but that's okay um, these are both going to feel good in the hand, except build quality. Yes, the iPhone 13 mini takes it, no doubt. Uh, both of these have a nano SIM card slot, but the iPhone 13 mini has an eSIM, which is uh, found on several phones, on Pixels, on iPhones, and some Motorola's, some Samsung's. Um, but what that means is that you can get two different phone numbers with two different data plans at the same time on your phone and also activate your phone without uh, getting a physical sim card so that's very convenient uh, the a32 heavy does not have that obviously at this price point iphone 13 mini ip68 does some water resistance great phone to dunk underwater for six meters for 30 minutes great with water environments galaxy a32 5g doesn't like the water there's nothing of water repellency or dust repellency on that phone. Now for the screen size, big difference. I iPhone 13 mini has a 5.4 inch all screen display except for the notch. Uh, you got six and a half inch display in the A32 5G. So that's a big difference is screen size. Some people prefer that smaller iPhone 13 mini screen size and I would suspect that's why they get it. Um, the A32 5G has a great, big, beautiful screen to look at consumption of media and videos and pictures and scrolling the web. You get 85% screen to body ratio on the 13 mini, 81% on the A32 5G. Resolution wise, you get 476 PPI, 1080p on the iPhone 13 mini, 720p display, 270 PPI on the A32 5G. So the overall nicer screen to look at is iPhone 13 mini. Both have a 60 hertz refresh rate. Now for the OS, very, very different story here. iPhone 13 mini has the clean iOS 15. It will get several years of updates uh, on the update schedule very quick for several years. 
A32 5G Android 11 with Samsung UI on top. So this is a very customized version of Android. It is not stocked like a Nexus, or I'm sorry, well, like a Nexus, like a Pixel, or like a, a OnePlus or Motorola. This is a, um, a, a, lot, have a lot of features, very, very customizable, but it could be a little bit too much for a lot of people. But nonetheless, Samsung um, is gonna update this phone for several years, but it's not gonna be very fast. But regardless, if you're getting the iPhone 13 mini or the A32 5G, all the popular apps will be available on both platforms, chipset wise. Um, iPhone 13 mini has the brand new, super fast, super fresh A15 Bionic. A32 5G, a little bit on the lower end with the MediaTek Dimensity 720. Basically, it is a lower end chip, mm, less than mid range. Um, for everyday tasks, both of these will be fine, but you'll definitely see a big difference when it comes to gaming. The iPhone 13 mini will take on any app in the app store, no problem, and for several years, it'll be super fast with the performance. A32 5G will suffer at some point, um, but for everyday tasks, that won't be a problem. So think of watching YouTube, think of Twitter, social media, maps, Bluetooth, hotspot, all your regular day activities will be fine, but when you get to when you get to intensive games or heavy video editing, it'll falter big time. But if you don't do any of that type of stuff, everyday people will won't really notice the big difference. When it comes to internal storage, the iPhone 13 mini has 128 gigs. They doubled it from last year on the iPhone 12 mini. So it has a great amount of storage space. The Galaxy A32 5G stays at 64 gigs. Um, both of these have four gigs of RAM, um, but the both of these amounts of RAM will be perfectly fine for everyday tasks, but the iPhone 13 mini um, iOS uses RAM very efficiently and it will uh, save several apps in the background you won't see any performance issues it'll be great to switch between apps a32 5g you might find the stutter here and there and some apps will forcibly close um, if you have a lot of apps running in the background the a32 5g does have expandable storage so on a storage front it's kind of a tie you can expand the storage as you see fit for the camera situation, iPhone 13 mini has two cameras in the back, 12 megapixel main shooter, 12 megapixel ultra wide. A32, A, A32 5G has four cameras in the back, very impressive for this price point. 48 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro, 2 megapixel depth, both shooting 4K. So surprisingly, the main cameras, the camera system on these devices are pretty good. Hands down, the iPhone 13 mini is the best camera on the market without going the pro version of iPhone. It'll take great pictures in the daytime and at nighttime. Same thing with video, super impressive. Great if you like taking video and pictures. A32 5G, kind of impressive for the price. Um, the array of cameras it has, I like that ultra wide, but I would say that the camera will be okay in the daytime with the video and the pictures, but it will start suffering with low light, just like any other uh, lower end Android. But I'm surprised that it has 4K. So uh, $730 device versus a $200 device or even free. It's pretty impressive on the camera front, I gotta admit. Selfie camera, 12 megapixels on the mini, 13 megapixels on the A32. 4K on the iPhone 13 mini, 1080p on the A32. Both of these selfie cameras are pretty good. Stereo speakers on the iPhone 13 mini. Uh, you don't get that on the A32, but you do get a headphone jack unlike the iPhone. So that's gonna make some people happy. Both have Bluetooth 5.0, and that will help you connect perfectly fine on both of these devices with your wireless speakers, with your wireless headphones, and your smartwatches. You have NFC on the iPhone 13 mini for Apple Pay. Um, depending on your market, you probably are not gonna get NFC on the A32 5G. iPhone 13 mini sticking to the lightning port for charging. A32 5G has the standard USB-C port for charging. Unlocking and security. iPhone 13 mini has re uh, reliable face ID. A32 5G has a side-mounted fingerprint reader, which is reliable as well. Both of these um, will be fast to open up your device. Now for the battery, um, a little bit of a surprising story here, but let's, let's take a deeper dive. iPhone 13 mini um, has a bigger battery than the iPhone 12 mini, but it is still small by today's standards. 
Um, I'm hoping that this battery will last you most of the day. I don't, I don't have that much confidence, but it should last you most of the day. A32 5G is, has a huge 5,000 milliamp battery. This is where the A32 5G really, really shines. It's probably it's one of its best features is that giant battery. It has, uh, you pair that with a lower end screen and a lower end processor, you have a recipe for great battery life. Definitely get you one or two days of battery life with heavy usage. And then also they both have fast charging, 20 watts on the iPhone 13 mini, 15 watts on the A32 5G. You get 50% charge in 30 minutes on the iPhone. It also has MagSafe charging, wireless charging. You don't get that on the A32 5G, but you really won't be too worried about it because of that huge battery. Battery life on the A32 5G blows it out of the water from the iPhone 13 mini, but it's, you're sacrificing battery life for a small portable size. So we went through all the specs together. You pretty much know everything you need to know to make a decision on which one is a better device. But even with all that stuff being said, I mean, obviously the better device, it's hard to tell. Um, the iPhone 13 mini is a special case. People that get this phone will appreciate its small size and you're not sacrificing um, any type of performance. It's the same setup as internals and, and, and powerful specs as the regular bigger iPhone 13, but in the mini size. The big downside though is the battery, even though they have um, improved battery life by getting a physically bigger battery and um, iOS 15 efficiency, it sh you should get through most of the day. But the A32 5G offers so much for that $200 price point or usually free. Every prepaid carrier offers it for free, um, which is awesome. It has a lot of cameras on the phone, but you can get crappy pictures at night, but it does have 4K. Um, the battery is awesome. The battery life is just nice. The, it has a 4K camera. Um, and it has, you know, just, you know, a modern design, a big screen. And the place where it kind of suffers is in the chipset and maybe a little bit in the RAM department. A lot of phones in, in the Android world should start really coming with only six gigs of RAM um, for newer phones. But, you know, it's still going to do everyday tasks very, very well. When you start doing heavy uh, video editing or heavy gaming, this is not the phone for you. It will suffer a lot. The iPhone 13 mini, there's really no compromises except battery life. And the people that are getting this are getting it for the portable size. Um, but the A32 5G has that big old screen. So if you like consumption and videos and scrolling, um, you got a lot of space to work with. Um, these phones are kind of very, very similar, but very, very different. They're the, one of the, they're the cheapest 5G phones in, in, in their class. So, you know, these aren't a direct comparison, but they're a very, very great comparison of what these phones can offer you for their price points. Um, the iPhone 13 mini, even though it's the cheapest 5G iPhone in the 13 line, but it's still pretty expensive. When you throw in tax and everything, it's like 800 bucks. The A32 5G is free. So for, for, the, for being free, the A32 5G is very impressive but the iPhone 13 mini is the overall better phone. But let me know what you guys think. I really, really think the A32 offers you a lot of value, but the iPhone 13 mini is just a better phone overall if you like a portable device without many sacrifices besides battery life. Well, let me know what you guys think. I really appreciate it. If you subscribe, it helps me out. It really motivates me. I love making these videos. I, look, I love comparing phones and specs and all that good stuff. Um, I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. I really uh, appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for checking out the video. Peace.